NZ350. And these things here, these cover inspection covers, are almost always broken on these earlier ones. This is a broken fin up there, but um, so they're called Überstrom decals, I think, in German. So I need to, um, I'm going to try and, or have tried to manufacture some more of these. So, right, so step one is you've obviously got to make a plug. So the easiest way to make a plug, of course, is out of the original part. So once you've got that out of there, you can then just repair the fins using pieces of plastic, cardboard, whatever you fancy, really, wood, perhaps. And then you need to take a silicon mould of that. So I use this here, which is Shaw 28 RTV, which is cheap enough to buy. And you put in, um, you put in some blue hardener, make a little box. There you go. There's your little RTV mould of that. So step one is the plug. Step two is take the mould. Like that. And you just tape it together when you're ready to fill it. Step three is you boil up some wax. Just get a grubby up. We get the wax. You can see it's slightly starting to cool down there. Let's take that out because we don't need any more. There's obviously a label stuck on the bottom. It's usually best to let this cool down just a little bit so it becomes a little bit more viscous um, but in this case we're just going to slosh it straight in there we go give a good tip around which is right down in that hole so now I'm going to just top it up a bit more. You'll probably find it shrinks a little bit too. So it's best to keep a bit extra. You can find somewhere flat to put that quickly so it levels. Okay, so up next we've got our wax copy that we need to replicate into aluminium. There it is. This one, I've put a little bit of clay around it. You see I patched up there, a bit of shrinkage. So I thought I'd try to see what, what difference it makes if you get um, perhaps a clay from a clay mould rather than a sand equivalent. So we just thought I'd try a couple of different types to see how they come out. And I'm going to make two because I'm going to cast them, I think, at different angles. I'm going to ponder that for a minute. So next up, I want to add some cement powder in here. A quick mix up, a bit more. Obviously you don't want a lot of cement because you want to be able to break it open. But if you put a bit of cement in it, it helps give you a finer mix as well. A bit more detail. I'm just going to mix that up for a minute. Reposition this. Look at all those noisy geese flying around. Um, so when you position this, you want to bear in mind which way the aluminium is going to flow. So uh, here, I'm, on this one, I'm going to tip the aluminium from this top end across these fins. Because the first time I tried this, the, um, the fins seemed to get air bubbles in them. Um, so make sure that's packed down. Obviously, this is quite a fiddly shape to do. So I'm going to be a bit careful packing it all around. But I'm just going to pack that in for a minute, and I'll be back in a second. So we finished packing them all down, and um, the easiest way to do this is to put it in neatly and pack them all down with a stick or something gently, and then once you've got it all nice and firm, just excav excavate back to the wax, just so it's exposed, and just think, to, you know, make sure you create this nice little well. Uh, you can see I've put them in two different methods, so we can see which one comes out better. So this one is going to fill straight up with aluminium, of course, which will flood. And if you think about it, it should pour down that hole into the bottom half. Hopefully some air will come out there. And I would imagine as it gushes, if we pour it this way, the air will rush up here, out through these holes and fill in, um, hopefully fill in those veins, or those fins. This one, pour it down there. Hopefully it won't meet too many air bubbles on the way out. If it does, we can just put drills straight down this side, perhaps. Uh, just to, just to encourage some of the air, I think I might do that actually. Just with a normal hand drill once it's gone hard, just drill into the wax. So once we've done this, we need to obviously let them dry out. 
kept for probably a couple of days really if there's any moisture in this uh, mixture when you go to pour the aluminium in of course the vapor will turn to gas and it will blow great big holes in your work so I'm just going to leave that for a few days to dry out and then we'll do the final dry in the oven upside down, remove them from these plastic tubs and uh, at which case the, max will, the, the wax will melt out. It's usually best to do that I think though before, um, when you, before you tip the aluminium so just uh, that way the, um, the mould will still be hot and it should be a bit drier than perhaps if you've done it a week before or two days before and then you've left it kicking around and it will then absorb more moisture again of course then when you go to pour the aluminium in you get a bit more fizzy so we'll leave this for a few days just to take the bulk of the moisture out and set and uh, then we'll come back and we'll heat it up in the oven melt the wax out at the same time we'll get the burner going and uh, get the aluminium ready to be melted the furnace uh, really easy to make this and cheap it's cost me about one pound which is over a dollar and it's essentially a soup warmer that you'd find at a rock concert or something like that. And it did have an electric thing that turned the soup round. And then in here, in there is the, uh, this obviously is just the main warmer as it were. There was then a pot that sat in that, which is no good because it was aluminium. We're gonna melt that of course. And then there's this concrete jacket here, which uh, was previously full of water of course. And the idea was it heated the water up and slowly worked its way through to the soup. So these are ideal, of course, because you can uh, replace the water with concrete and you're left with a nice little uh, furnace. At the bottom of here, of course, there's drill holes drilled in the bottom and a hole drilled in the side, whereby this is just a 22 mil copper pipe. And then obviously there's a gap left in the bottom to so just put a bit of foam in there when you pull the concrete in or something to leave enough room for uh, the air to go up. And then we've got cheapo kids. Um, airbed inflator or dinghy inflator and we then got the crucible which is stainless steel of course which is double the melting point nearly and then loads of aluminium which I picked up from various places this is the lid that came with it now putting the lid on actually makes um, a significant difference to the temperature and how quickly the aluminium melts because obviously uh, the temperature will rise much faster uh, so it's almost a must however i did leave the lid on for a few minutes and actually melted the stainless steel pot so i want to be careful of that right next job is to light it up we've got this set up and just lit it so i've got a fire lighter in there and a bit of coal and a little bit of wood you can see now the pipe that goes over to the air blower just let that have a little go for a minute right, i'm going to hit the switch you'll see what difference it makes So that'll soon heat that up in a minute, but in the meantime, I'm going to quickly pop over here. Okay, so the, uh, I'm doing a bit of wax melting. As you can see, the alternative to putting it in the oven, because uh, my wife's con inconsiderably decided to cook a roast in it. So um, I'm going to have to do this outside, so I've decided to use the hot air gun instead. As you can see, it's slowly melting. Um, once that bit of uh, cement gets really hot, of course, it'll all just pour out and I can get a screwdriver in there and neatly and just tidy up any bits that fell in. So I've got two of those to do. And uh, so I'm just going to go back now and heat up the coals. And we'll carry on from there. We've melted the wax out of this one. Let's have a look down in there. And this one's en route. It's the alternative the oven, of course. And then we go back over to the furnace. Here she is, blowing away. And uh, you can see it's starting to get pretty dangerous. You can see the aluminium in there. Health and people, safety people will start crying at this point. But we're having a bit of fun at the same time. So I'm going to let that cook for a bit more. Obviously I'll put the lid on in a minute and I'll heat it right up. Um, as soon as the moulds are finished then hopefully we'll be good to pour. The bulk of the aluminium has already melted. And if you look carefully, I'll try to drop my phone in there. Or ruin it. You can see the bottom of the actual pot itself, the stainless steel is glowing red. So be a bit careful of this because it suddenly gets to the point where the stainless steel melts and then of course your furnace is full of aluminium which sets pretty quick and it's knackered. So I'm going to turn that off for a second to give it a chance to cool down a little bit. Mm. 
So we look down there, we can see that that nice big Pentium type CPU is melted. Oh, look at all that. It's nice, isn't it? Thanks for the smoke. There we go. Nice piece of melted aluminium. I think we can get rid of the lid now. Surprising the amount of slag you off it, look. Forms pretty quick. Just want to get all that off. Tried to flick it on my shoe, which was a bit stupid. There we go. Watches of that. That's all really oxidization where the aluminium has been blocks of it left outside. So you can get to a nice pure bit. Very satisfying this. Right, I'm just gonna go and get a glove for this particular this next bit. Okay, so we take this out carefully because as you can imagine it's pretty hot and we pour. That's all the wax bubbling out. I think if we'd used the oven we'd have got a better result to be honest because you can hold it nice and neatly upside down and uh, get all the wax out. I think there's a bit of wax left in that. Can't find my stirring implement. Oh, it's because I'm treading on it. Here we go. Thank you, boy, from that fire. Let's have a quick whip around here. Oh, that's nice. Look at that. It's good fun, this, isn't it? Probably made a bit too much, didn't I? But hey. I've been in school this without anybody moaning at you. It cools pretty quick this. In terms of solidifies I probably should have said. Okay, you go picking it up. I think it's going off already. We leave that to cool down. Back to the furnace, see a nice little hole there. Shame to waste that. We don't got anything else to melt really. And uh, we'll come back and see how they look in a few hours. Here comes the bit you've all been waiting for. It's actually been about half an hour, but curiosity's got the better of me, so that little pat. There she comes. see the basic shape in there. may look a bit rough but we're not worried about that because 10 minutes work with the file and a bit of a Dremel and uh, we'll be good to go. So what I'll do is a saw straight down there look and then she'll be left with that and I'll just file the rest off. So see how thin that fins come out. Um, this one was the one poured straight down the fins so that one's okay that's definitely usable. Quite pleased with that actually. Right, here comes the big pudding one. Let's get him out of there. This one was poured differently, so we'll see how this goes. Oh, here he comes. Oh, look at that. Yeah, you can see in there is a lovely Uberstrom decal. Chisel that a bit. It's actually got a shine on it. So what must be happening is um, this was the one that was sand and cement. So I know on the internet they always tell you to use 
some kind of special green sand or something, but God knows what that is. So you can ask him to get to get that out with a knife. Um, but what the wax seems to have done, if you notice, um, there's that one. Let me show you that one. See how shiny that is. It was like polished. And there's here's the one that was in the clay. The detail's not bad. Those line, the fins are quite straight. Um, but this one has definitely come out a much smoother finish all round. You can see the top fin there. Like I said, it almost looks polished. So what must be happening is when when you're melting the wax out, the wax is obviously sealing the holes in the sand, making them less porous um, and getting a much better finish. I'll put two of them side by side. There we go. Just going to take this off the tripod. See how they compare. Right, I'll go and dig them out a bit better. We'll see how they look. There they are, both out. This was the clay one. Hmm, it's basic shapes there, but take an awful lot of filing. In fact, that side there would realistically be too pitted. Uh, I think that was probably because when you push the clay into it, you can't really push it hard enough against the wax. If it had been liquid clay, which I think is probably how they do it in the factory, probably got a really good job that one. However, this one, I must say, it looks a brilliant job. Look at that. Minimal amount of sanding to do. I even managed to get the screw holes in that one. So all we need to do literally is just saw straight down there, look. We've got ourselves a really nice cylinder head inspection cover. Obviously you can use this method for making anything really and to be fair this is a pretty tricky shape to make for a beginner. Because um, anything thin casted like that can be difficult. And there you go look. So I'm just going to cut that off, sand it down, give it a coat of black paint, drill the holes out and we're good to go. Here's we're back now to the finished one. So this is the wax plug we used. There we go. And um, that's the actual finished one. And cast an aluminium. I'll get it in focus a bit better. There we go. So it goes in the cylinder head that way. The all air mixture comes up, hits that, goes off that way to the cylinder. A little bit of paint on that. And uh, that'll be fine. And these sections here, the carbon will soon. I mean, I'll file that out a little bit more, of course, before I use it. But the carbon will uh, smooth that off anyway. There's one I made earlier. And they do work perfectly well. I've just painted it black, by the way, so that it stands out a bit easier for you to be able to see on the camera. Actually, it almost goes far to say it was a better job than the original one, but the original ones that I've just showed you on the other side were actually Russian versions. 